This is George from Hitech Legion, and I'm sitting here with two Noctua coolers that are probably very, very familiar looking. However, in today's day and age, with small form factor becoming more popular and a huge shift over to ITX uh, mainboards, compatibility has become more of an issue. RAM, of course, is also still an issue, but some of the manufacturers still sticking giant heat sinks on for no reason. Um, but it's become less of an issue than it was, but still a concern for many. Really, the shift to the ITX motherboards has become huge as you need uh, clearance of that PCI slot. Now, Noctua has actually updated the NHC 15 and the NHC 14. They're two most powerful coolers in order to become more uh, friendly to ITX motherboards. We're going to take a look at them, the NHC 15S and the NHC 14S. Now, for the longest time, the NHC 14 has been the go-to as far as top-down coolers. Uh, it has always been the top-of-the-line performance, uh, enthusiast top-down cooler. So if you're building something with smaller form factor or whatnot, it was always the go-to piece. Now, uh, it did have one little issue, though, in that on micro ATX motherboards, it interfered with the first PCI Express slot. Now, when you take a look at the NHC 14S, it is exactly the same piece as the NHC 14 with one little difference. And you can see it right here in the front. Offset design for PCI Express clearance. Uh, now, it doesn't always apply just to um, ITX boards. Uh, you do have a lot of PCI Express slots that are getting kind of close to the uh, CPU sockets these days. So, you know, and people using the first slot a lot more. So it's going to come in kind of handy there. Now, take a look at the box. Standard Noctua packaging. Just a couple quick things to go over uh, on here. Height, 115 millimeters tall with the fan mounted as you see here with fan on top, 140 millimeters tall. That also gives you 70 millimeters of RAM clearance uh, if that is a concern uh, under the cooler when it's mounted. NFA 14 fan, 1500 RPM, 14 uh, inch or 140 millimeter fan I should say. 1500 RPM, 24.6 TBA. So you get, you know, the good Noctua fan. Nice, silent, smooth sounding, delivers a lot, a lot of airflow. So really what they've done here, taking the NHC 14, and if you take a look at the back, all they've done is kind of shoved it over a little bit. So this side, you've got a lot shorter piece than you do on this side. So that way it's going, when you install it, it's going to sit up higher in the case, away from the first PCI Express slot. Six millimeter heat pipes, copper, nickel plated, coming up through the aluminum fins, slightly jagged in certain places with a little convex in the center. Uh, we actually will direct the air a little bit, gets more of the air flowing through the fins as a result. Also sealed sides to do the same. Now you notice the seventh piece right here is actually a support. Now uh, some people will be saying, well it's not that heavy of a cooler, why does it need a support? And the answer is really for margin of error when you're mounting the fan and whatnot. You can get a ton of leverage um, unlike you would with a tower type cooler and you could actually you know really easily bend the uh, heat pipes if you're not careful down at the end. So very very simple there. Now the fan clips on from the bottom or the top. Noctua does a great job with their fan clips. Um, really, really easy to use. You'll never find yourself struggling with Noctua fan clips trying to get a fan on or off. So very nicely done there. Comes down to the base itself and the CPU block milled very nicely. It's not a mirror finish. Noctua has never used mirror finishes on their uh, bases. And this is the same uh, slight mill marks, but a very, very smooth finish overall and very, very nicely done by Noctua. Noctua uses the Sectifirm 2 mounting kit for both the D15S and the C14S. And uh, the D15S comes in one box, the 14S comes in three separate boxes. The difference is really uh, merely to accommodate the shape of the boxes that they're shipped in, um, but they are exactly the same components within each one. Taking a look now, you get everything you need for AMD or Intel mounting. Uh, it fits Intel 1150 series or 2011, including V3, AMD. You're going to have AM2, AM3, as well as FM1, FM2, uh, plus or no plus. So all the same mounting there. You get excellent instructions for both. Uh, one thing to keep in mind also, when you are doing an AMD mount, you will need the factory backplate that your motherboard came with in order to mount it. But as you go through, as you can see, well illustrated, very easy to follow instructions. Also very, very easy mount to begin with. 
Moving past that, your Intel set packs separately with retention bars and tie downs. AMD set, a little bit simpler because you're going to be using the factory back plate, like I said. Intel back plate for 1150 series. Moving over into the accessories. Got a tube of NPH1, low noise adapter, fan clips, and of course, Noctua badge. I'm actually going to be doing an uh, Intel 1150 series mount today, which has the most steps involved. Uh, now, I do want to point out though, take a quick look. If you're doing an AMD, very simply, screw goes through the retention bracket, spacer goes on, and you'll screw right into the back plate of your motherboard, and you'll wind up with your two retention brackets on. Now, if you're doing uh, an Intel 11 or 2011 series, whether it be uh, regular 2011 or V3, you've got your standoff, which will screw into the factory backplate, and you'll then wind up in the same position you would be as when you take your 1150 backplate, put it into place, and as you can see, you've then got the threaded bolt sticking through. So we're going to move from there on here, and put the four spacers on. And take your retention brackets into place. Make sure the curve is going away from the CPU. And four caps go on. That's going to be the same on 2011 as well as the 1156, like I said, when you've got the bolts coming through there. It becomes the same. Once we had all four tightened down, we'll take a look at how the actual towers mount. The NHC 14S uses exactly the same mounting system as you see here. Only difference being you've got two holes in the tower itself that you can put the screwdriver through to get two screws, and you'll put it into place. And exactly the same procedure. Get the top started. Move over to the bottom. And go back and forth with the tightening. And you can then clip your fan into place. And again, once mounted, the offset's noticeable on the 14S. Uh, it is again raised up from the GPU, more than we're used to seeing, and it does clear the first PCI Express slot. And 65 millimeters of space, or I should say, uh, yeah, 65 millimeters of space for the RAM, so you've got plenty of room up there. That's if you've got the fan on top with the fan underneath. Um, you've only got about 40 millimeters, so good looking in the case. Really, really easy to install both of these Noctua coolers, the 15S and the 14S. Now getting a look at the performance of the NHC 14S, uh, 4770K stock settings, obviously not going to make any of these coolers flinch. These are all top-end coolers in this test. And as you can see, results across the board are pretty much identical. So really not challenging uh, any of these coolers in any way, shape, or form. Take a look though, the 14S at 34dB. Very, very good, very, very quiet. So let's move on and we're gonna uh, bump up the clock to 4.4 gigahertz and raise the voltage up to 1.21 volts and we'll start to see a little bit of a difference here. Uh, the NHC 14S performs as well as expected. Um, still the top of the top-down coolers as far as performance being matched by the Dark Rock TF, which is also a little bit quieter, but the Dark Rock TF also doesn't have the compatibility that the 14S has. So you've got a little bit of a trade-off there both you know, offering top of the line performance as far as a top down cooler goes. Now you're just a couple degrees off of the uh, NHD 15S and only um, 
about four degrees off of the uh, NHD 15 itself. Now, you're a couple degrees off, of course, from the uh, H100i GTX, but when you quiet the H100i uh, GTX down to 40 dB, uh, the NHC 14S obviously is a much better solution. We even gave the uh, AOI uh, an extra 6 dB to play with, and it still couldn't match the NHC 14S. So, all in all, really a strong showing from the NHC 14S as it retains its spot at the top of top-down coolers. Okay, so did Knoxville lose anything with the offset here uh, from the NHC 14 to the 14S? Absolutely not. Performance was absolutely identical, right on par with the NHC 14. Of course, noise wasn't affected whatsoever. They took the best top-down cooler on the market and simply made it more compatible uh, and updated it to really fit in with today's day and age with the extended use of ITX boards and smaller form factor cases. Really a win-win for everybody. Uh, it kind of obsoletes the NHC 14 a bit. I don't know if they're going to keep that on the market. I because you know the offset is so slight that really it's hard to notice uh, when it's installed in the case unless of course you're using that first PCI Express slot when you're going to notice it all the way around. So really a fantastic job here by Noctua. Very simple fix but uh, they did exactly what needed to be done and they took what uh, piece of the NHC 14 which earned a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award and made the 14S which is a more compatible version which is also earning a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award. If you're looking for a top-down cooler and you do need your first PCI Express slot then this is definitely going to be the way to go. The NHC 14S uh, from Noctua, once again, a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award, and very, very strongly recommended if you're going to be using that first PCI Express slot and need the extended compatibility.